In this lecture, we're going to talk about a uh, super useful topic, which is creating arrays that automatically uh, size themselves so they can kind of expand or contract, kind of like a slinky, depending on how much data they have. And uh, this helps us get over some of the um, limitations of using uh, fixed size arrays. Or I mean, um, I mean, you could always probably use a fixed size array, but uh, this allows us to do things a lot easier without um, constantly uh, mucking around with uh, the primitive uh, sort of the uh, built-in arrays of a language. And so I'm going to tell you about the Java array list uh, data type and it's how Java does dynamically sized arrays but in any modern programming language you're going to find some sort of uh, data structure that allows you to do do the same thing um, and it's probably probably the one of the most common uh, collection data types. So we call a collection data type something that holds a bunch of stuff. A dynamically growing array is just uh, something you're going to use all the time in computer science. And in order to tell you how to do it in Java, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how Java handles uh, things like packages and um, what you need to do in order to make use of array lists. And this will get us into some, some details about um, you know, a little bit about Java generics and how uh, it uses wrapper classes for some of the primitive types. Here's the problem. Um, normal arrays in Java, uh, you've seen them before, right? We declare them with the, the empty square brackets and then on the right hand side we always declare how big of a thing we're going to put in there. And this, this works as long as you know a priori how many things are going to be in that array. So if you know, you know, if somebody on the first line of the input file says, hey, there are going to be a hundred things after, you know, this this first line, you know you need to make an array of a hundred positions and then you can load uh, data in there. The trouble is if you don't know that beforehand, if you don't know beforehand there's going to be a hundred items, you're just constantly being hit by items, you know, you're reading stuff in continuously from you know the user or something like that or maybe things are changing it's a, a game and 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 uh, obstacles or enemies are coming in and out of the game so you want to add things to your array you want to remove things from your array um, and so on and um, they're just not very flexible I mean one option you know in a circumstance like this would be to just say well I don't know how many things are coming in from my input file so I'll make an array that's you know I don't know a million positions long and that will you know, usually work until, you know, someday somebody runs your program with a million and one. Uh, but it's pretty expensive, though. I mean, if normally they're only going to need a thousand things and you've declared an array that holds a million, you're wasting a lot of time and memory to, to do that, and um, it's, it's quite inefficient. To use Java array lists, we need to know a little bit about how Java does things, all right? Um, there are a ton of useful things in the Java library, all kinds of different classes and uh, data types, and there's a million different things you can do with it. Um, because there's a million different things, you don't automatically um, get access to everything in the Java library. You only get access to the things that were deemed sort of the most important. So classes like string, system.out, these things you get automatically because the people that designed Java figured uh, everybody would want access to these data types. Other things, all right, and frequently from this point on, we're going to be wanting other things like array lists. These things aren't part of this uh, default set of classes you get for for free. And we need the array list, and and so how do we do that? Well, it's in something called a a package, and it's just a a package is a collection of classes that are under what's called a namespace, and uh, the idea of a namespace is uh, a lot of developers, you know, maybe somebody else wants to develop, you know, a class called vector or a class called, um, you know, array list or string or something like that. And, and what if you have two people and they both decide to use the same name for their class? So the namespace helps us avoid naming conflicts by allowing us to uh, drill down and specify we actually mean the string class that's in the java.lang package all right and you don't need to do this for string because string is one of these uh, types that was deemed so important this package java.lang you automatically get this so if you don't put java.lang in front of your string you still get a string object so you don't normally do this but you could if you wanted to 
all right but this qualification is optional for the things uh, that are in this java.lang package because you get that package automatically the array list the dynamically growing array we're going to talk about today is in the java.util package and you don't get java.util for, for, for free um, if you just type array list uh, eclipse or your java compiler is not going to know what you know not going to know what you're talking about. All right? It's going to complain it can't find, you know, it doesn't know what array list is or what data type it is. You have to import, and here's the magic line you need, and this goes at the top of your program outside your class declaration. You do an import and you say java.util and I want the array list class out of that, um, that package. And then from that point on you can actually um, just use the array list in your program. All right, and that's and that's one option. And the other option would be if to not do the import and then always specify. Anytime you need an array list, you could type java.util.arraylist uh, to fully qualify that name. But uh, it gets a bit tedious and it makes your code a little harder to read. So normally, what programmers do is if they're going to use something out of one of these other packages, they put an import and uh, then they can use the class. This is just one of the possible classes, and you know if you look in uh, the Java docs online and search for something like uh, java.util, you'll see there's a whole array of different classes, including an array list. All right, all kinds of different things you can do in the java.util class, and you can uh, sort of peruse that and see, you know, maybe there's other things you might want to use in the util class. Here's the problem we want to work on. We want to reverse We've got a, a file, and let's say the file contains all the 50 states, and we want to reverse whatever's in that file. We don't know what's in the file. Okay, maybe it's 50 states, maybe it's 50 names, or it's a thousand names. Who knows what's in the file? But whatever's in the file, we want to print it out in backwards order for some reason. All right, and unlike other input files we've looked at in some of our uh, programming assignments, in this case, this input file states.txt, it doesn't come with a handy uh, number in the beginning that says there there are 50 things after this. All right, um, you don't know how many things are in there, and this is problematic because you can only read this stuff in from standard input once. All right, you get to read in Alabama and then Alaska. You can read these things in once, and you could put them in an array, but you don't know how big of an array to make them, and you kind of need to store them off because, um, well, you don't. I mean, there you know, perhaps other ways you could do it, but uh, it'd be handy to store them all off, and then you can go through the array backwards and print them out. So that's the goal, is we want to store them uh, persistently in our program, and then, then we can go through them in whatever order we want or whatever. So reverse is just kind of one kind of toy application of this. And let's look at this. Um, I'll do it. Let's open up Eclipse. So I'm going to make a program that reverses things, all right, using, using this array list. And... Um, so its data type name is array list, all right. Um, but importantly, we always need to tell array list, um, or we should anyway. We should always tell array list what kind of thing we're going to put in the array list, and what's the data type. And this is a new format we haven't seen before. These angle brackets, and this is something uh, you'll eventually learn more about called Java generics. Um, but what we have inside the angle brackets is another reference type. We're saying I need an array. So just like, you know, if we normally create an array, we have to, you know, um, we have to specify the type, right? You know, so there would be a normal array declaration. So we have to specify the type here. But when we do an array list, first we, we use the array list data type. And then in angle brackets, we put the name of the data type. And now I can give it a name like lines. And what is going on the right side, right hand side? The exact same thing. Okay. This is kind of like the data type. It's, it's not just array list. It's array list angle bracket string is the data type. It's the type of variable lines. We it's an array list and it can only hold string objects, and normally that's what we want because we want to only usually store one particular data type in in an array list. And just like normal, we need these empty parentheses um, to construct an object. So we're constructing an object, and so we need arguments to the constructor. And there are other forms of array list. There are other ways. Uh, of constructing it, but the default constructor is usually uh, what we want. Now, notice Eclipse is not particularly happy with me, and what's it complaining? Aurelis cannot be resolved to a type, and this is because it's missing that import statement. 
All right, and what I need to do is to put it at my top of my program, import java.util.arraylist, and then that problem goes away. You know, and as I said, you could do this if you wanted to, so don't put the import in there. Um, and you could put java.util in the front of that, and you could put java.util in the front of that, and you could do it that way, but, um, you know, uh, it adds a lot of stuff. You'd have to do that everywhere in your program. So normally people do this, and this gets us only the ArrayList package out of util. Uh, you'll commonly see people also do, um, you know, you can use a wildcard here, so you can say, please get me all the classes out of the util class. All right. Um, and, you know, if you're going to use a lot of different util things, that might be okay, but be aware that you're getting everything in there then, and so you could, you know, potentially run into some naming conflicts, so it's, you know, perhaps safer to uh, just qualify exactly what you want. All right, we've got our array list now. We need to read in input from standard input, okay? And so I'm going to loop while there's input from standard input. All right, while it's not empty, keep looping, all right? And what do I want to do? Well, I could do it in, you know, first I could read the next line. So I could create a local variable line, standard in, oops, read line. All right, now I need to add it to the array list. Array list is an object, so lines dot will give me, you know, and Eclipse is going to give me lots of little helpful things, and it thinks there's, I guess, an 83% chance I want to add, and in fact, that is what I want. I want to add this line to, to the, that, and it's as simple as that. So unlike a normal array, we don't have to specify where. It's just going to add it to the end of the array, so this is going to be added at the, the first index position of this array list because there's nothing in it. And this will keep looping and keep adding to lines, and that's it. it we don't have to worry about how big to make it. It just adds until uh, you're done adding. And, and now, like I said, I wanted to reverse the lines in the file, and so what do I need to do? Well, I need to go backwards through the elements of that array list, and lines also has a method size. All right, and now be careful. So um, we can go backwards through the array list like this, okay? But just like normal arrays, array lists are zero based indexed. Lines that size is, you know, if I add five things, it's going to return five. But I don't want to go to index position five just like I went in a normal array because we have zero based indexing. We want to start at lines that size minus one, and that's the last element. And then we go as long as it's greater than or equal to zero and I minus minus. And now we just need to print things out. All right, and that should be a workable program. And let's, uh, let me open up a window into the workspace here. All right, and did I have, I don't have any example files, so uh, let's put, we'll just make a file called data in notepad. Okay, and I don't know, jumps over. Uh, okay, so it could be something like that, all the states. And now I can run, if I run Java reverse lines, and feed it the data file. Dog lazy the over jumps fox brown. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So I've reversed that sentence. And here's the same thing, you know, you know, a little, you know, pretty much the same program without some curly braces and uh, some comments telling you the various things in the different methods do. So the most common methods you're going to use with ArrayList are things like add to add things, get to get things, and size to figure out how many things are in there. Those are the basic operations you do with a normal array, and they're the basic operations you do with an array list. And as I said, be careful, zero-based indexing. So here's that bug I showed you when I first typed it in. Uh, be careful, make sure you don't ever go up to the size and try and get that element. Just like a normal array, you can get an index out of bounds array exception and 
Um, it will tell you some interest, you know, it'll tell you, ooh, you try to get 50 and the size is 50, or you try to get negative one, um, or whatever, or 100 and the size is 50. So it's kind of nice to get a nice helpful error message, but it's still going to crash. Let's do the same thing, but let's reverse some number file, some numbers, okay, and here are, here are some numbers or floating point values, and let's do the same thing, okay, and what if, let's see, shall I just change reverse lines to handle doubles instead, all right, I, I could read these numbers in, okay, as strings and put them in as strings, but let's say I want to actually store them as doubles instead all right and you might think it's as simple so we want to sort doubles in there so we'll change that data type to doubles and then we'll call read double in standard in okay oh, we gotta change that to uh, the next number so maybe we should change you know it's always always good to make your uh, whenever you change code don't be you know you might be tempted to leave that variable name as line, but it's not really line anymore. It's a number, so always name your change your variable names. So otherwise, you get confusing code. All right. Now, you might think this would work. What's it complaining about? Okay, dimensions. I uh, that's just a weird. I don't know what that means, right? Do you know what that means? Um, the trouble is in ArrayList in Java, you're not allowed to do this. You might think you can do this and you might want to do this you you you're storing primitive doubles and you know that's what you'd like to store but a limitation of java arrayless is they must store um reference types and double is a primitive type and it's pretty much as simple as changing to capital d double all right and what this does is tell java where you're going to use a we're, we're using a, a floating point double value but it's going to use its built-in wrapper class so it's actually a reference type that's pretty simple and all it does is store a double value and now I've got uh, basically I've changed my reverse line so really I should have put this in a, a new reverse nums but I already have the uh, solution in that one so I just did it this way um, we can make a nums.txt file uh, and we can put various numbers in there okay and now if we run reverse lines on nums, okay, it should have reversed the numbers in that file, and it did. All right. Now, I just undo all those changes. So now, eh, now we're back to the, oops, should we go back to the string solution? There, oops. All right, so now it's back reverse lines, and so here's here's my solution for reverse nums, pretty much what I just showed you. Uh, all right, and there's the problem. You can't use primitive variables in a array list, and it just won't work. It needs to be a reference type, and so just changing to capital D double will do the job. Um, and it, Java has a a bunch of built-in so every primitive type has a wrapper class and usually its name is just the name of the primitive type in capitals except for our friends integer and character for reasons no one quite understands uh, the Java folks decided instead of making this capital I int and capital C char uh, you know for symmetry that's what it should be but they've actually spelled these two wrapper classes out okay I don't know why um, so uh, that could trip you up. So just always use the um, you know the fully spelled out name of this one, and everything else is the same as the normal primitive type. Now I should mention this is you know often you know I see student code. Um, in the case of an array list, you have no choice. You need to use a wrapper, okay? And you have to use a wrapper, so that's fine. Um, but sometimes you see code, you know, like this in people's programs. They have a local variable, and it's a of um, it stores a floating point, but they use the wrapper instead of the primitive type. And this will work um, and compile and run and so on, but it's, you know, it's not, basically there's extra overhead associated with double. It costs a little bit of memory and a little bit of time to use the wrapper. Um, you know, on a modern computer doing two billion things a second, is it really going to matter much? Well, not really, but, uh, you know, it's a little 
uh, more amateurish. Um, if you really have primitive values, all right, the only reason to use a wrapper is when you're going through something like an array list. If you don't need to use them, then uh, you're just costing yourself resources. And certainly, you could cost yourself a significant amount of resources if you did something like, um, you know, you could create an array of, you know, a whole bunch of these double objects, all right? And this could get you into trouble. And this also probably gets you in trouble. Like if I, then, well, let's print those things out. I is less than zero. I, you know, oops. I equals zero. I is less than d dot length. I plus plus. And let's go system dot out. Print len. Let's print out that particular thing. And run our program. Okay. Unexpectedly, all right, I get all nulls, right? Um, by doing this, I've got a wrapper object and I haven't instantiated this. And um, and that's kind of a bit unexpected. If I change that to a primitive double, then I'm going to get automatic initialization. It's a primitive value, so it's not going to be null. It's actually going to be 0, 0.0. You got to be careful with wrappers. If you use wrappers, you got to be sure you knew, you like any kind of reference object, you've got to create the memory for it. So don't forget to do that. The Java folks knew this would be a little bit irritating, so they added some features to Java in uh, the 5.0 version called autoboxing and unautoboxing, and it basically handles mapping between primitive types and the wrapper classes automatically. Uh, there are methods you can call to do, you know, do the conversion yourself, but you know, in circumstances like this, like look, we're adding, you know, even though we need to add a double reference object to this array list, we're adding actually a primitive. If you look at the signature of standard in dot read double it actually returns a primitive double and so how are we putting a primitive double into and the actual array list needs a reference double a, a wrapper double and java it's auto boxing is automatically con making that wrapper object for you so you don't really have to think about it and and that's that's pretty nice um and you know it goes vice versa so you don't usually have to worry too much about it handy methods in the array list so things you need to do like I've shown you you can add an object that's a very common thing and it appends it to the end if you've got five things in the array list if you add it you're now gonna have six things and that last added item is gonna be in the very last item you can remove things by index and what will happen if you remove it you know from the beginning you move that very first element in the array everything else is going to shift over it's going to have to actually move everything over one element or if you move you know to remove something in the middle it's going to shift everything that's after that and once you're done with remove your list will have decreased in size by one you can also request removal of a specific object and it will go ahead and look through it and try and find that item and when it finds it it will uh, delete it and another handy one is if you're using an array list and you decide, oh, I don't want anything else in here. I'm going to destroy all my, you know, asteroids or something in one foul swoop. You can call the clear method and that will remove everything in the array list. Those are some of the, the basic, um, these are some of the basic methods. And I should point out, like, whenever you want to know, like, more, you know, um, you can always search for it. So if you search for something like Java array list in Google, all right, I should maybe zoom in a bit. Usually the first hits you'll get are be something on the Java platform and SE6, SE7, these are different versions. SE7 is, you know, the latest version, Java 7. And you can go through and it's good practice to learn to read these pages and um, try and figure out what various things do. But if you're looking, you have an array list and you want to, well, can I do something? You know, I don't want to write my own methods do, you know, such and such. You can look through here and see, here's a list of methods and it has a bunch of different things you could ask it to do um, and you can click on some of these and um, see well oh I can actually see you know if my array list contains rather than loop over all my elements I could just call the contains method and what does that do well returns true if the list contains a specified element okay um, and so on so it, it can save you a lot of effort if you learn to read these documentation so you first see if there's something already built in and you can just use it uh, always good to reuse, uh, reuse somebody else's code Here is a ArrayList example where we're adding um, four people, Alice, Bob, Bob, and Carol. And then we remove 
the second one, so that removes Bob. Okay, removes one of the one of the Bobs, and then we remove Bob by name. All right, then we try and do, remove him again, but he's already gone, so nothing happens. All right, then we clear it all out, and then nothing uh, nothing is left in there. All right. Um, and notice whenever you print a array list, it does provide you, you know, you get a nice uh, nice representation in square brackets. You can see everything in there. And one thing to note is array lists can have duplicates, all right? It's okay to have two bobs. You might need that for, you know, whatever reason in, in your array list. Duplicates, you know, things with the same, you know, same underlying uh, value, same object um, representation, string representation may be in there. Let's try and remove things from an array. All right, we're going to add Alice, Bob, Bob, and Carol. We're going to print them out. Okay, then we get this. And our goal here is to remove all Bobs. We don't like Bob. We're going to remove all Bob instances from this array list. You might think you could pull this off by looping over all the names in the array list, getting the next one, seeing if it dot equals. So remember, always using dot equals with strings so almost never ever compare strings with double equals and we're doing it the right way here we're using the dot equals method and we see does that thing at position zero does it equal bob if so remove it and then loop the next one surprisingly what you get out of this is an array that still contains a single bob and it's important to understand when you do a, rem a remove on an array list it's removing and then reducing the list size by one and what effectively happens, we hit this first bob. We're on this bob here, and we call remove on index position one, and it removes this bob. And then everybody shifts over, so now this bob is in index position one, and Carol's in position two. But this i index variable in the for loop just carries its march, you know, march, marching on, and it actually ends up, it was on one, it's going to increment to two. Well, now two is Carol, and the other bob is kind of slipped in to the position you just looked at and you end up not deleting it. Here's a way if you need to do something like that, a handy trick for doing such a thing. If you want to loop through an array list deleting stuff, if you go backwards, it actually sorts this problem out because now when we delete, it deletes from, um, you know, we are on Carol, we don't do Carol, we see Bob and we actually delete Bob and then Carol moves into Bob's position, but we already knew we didn't want to delete Carol. And so the next time I gets decremented, we go this way and then we see this Bob and we delete that Bob and then Carol moves into that Bob's position and then we move one to the left and check Alice and Alice isn't deleted and now we get the expected behavior. So that's just a little, um, you know, a little trick you might use if you're deleting stuff from an array list uh, in a loop like that. To summarize, we looked at a very handy uh, class in the Java Java library called ArrayList, and it's like an array, but it's more powerful because you don't have to decide beforehand how big it's going to be. You can remove stuff in the middle. It has a bunch of other useful methods you can look up, like contains, and it will just automatically grow. So as you add stuff, um, it will occasionally make itself bigger to handle the extra data, and um, you know. In the future, you'll learn about how, you know, the sort of underlying mechanisms involved in something like an array list. You must be careful with array lists. They have to hold reference types, so no fair putting primitive types like a double or an int. You need to put wrapper objects like capital D double or capital I integer. And as you add and remove in a loop, just be a little careful and understand when you do that. Whenever you add or remove, it's changing that size and potentially the index you're using in your for loop is is no longer quite what you think it is.